Li Chi, an old soldier's ballad. In bright sun, we climbed the peaks to look for signal fires. At dusk, we watered our horses by the rivers of Yao He. In our camps, the sounding watch was muffled by winds thick with sand. Yet we heard the sound of a lady's lute, suffused with bitterness. Under clouds, in desolate places, miles beyond our walls, snow fell and blotted out the endless desert. Tartar geese cried sadly, flying southward night after night. Hearing them, even Tartar faces ran with tears. Now, they say, the Jade Gate Pass is once more under siege. So our soldiers risk their lives again, advancing with a light chariot's force. Year after year, our dead pile up beyond these wastes, for nothing more than a few grapevines sent home to the gardens of the House of Han. So, we have here another ballad, and uh, with a very common topic that we've already encountered in previous ballads, whether heptasyllabic or uh, pentasyllabic. Uh, the theme, the subject of this uh, poem is war in the frontiers, uh, fighting against the barbarians. And as usual, uh, the poem presents this fight with a quite dark and dim tone. It's nothing epic or glorious or heroic or nice. It's just the hardships, the horrors, the death, the pain, the suffering of serving the emperor in the frontiers. The, the author of, the, of this poem is an old friend of ours, Li Qi. We've already encountered five poems of his. I think it was in the section on heptasyllabic Fu. So it seems that ballads were believed to be the, the forte of Li Qi, the best uh, genre in, in which he excelled. I think there's one left somewhere. Li Qi has a total of seven poems. And I think I already commented upon that when, when we last talked about Li Qi's poems. It's quite a high number in this anthology for a poet that I hadn't heard much about. I imagine he might have been very appreciated at the time of uh, the compilation of this anthology. But if so, I don't think he has received an equivalent recognition in the present. I mean, uh, take Gao Xi, the poet that we read about yesterday. He only has a couple of poems in this anthology. And yet there is at least one book in English, which I have in my shelves, which is a monographic study of Gao Xi with some of his poems. I'm not aware of anything like that existing for, for Li Qi. But anyway, uh, this, as we say, is an old uh, soldier's ballad, probably inspired in a Fu of the same title, and uh, same topic as, as, as Gao Xi's poem, really. And uh, it's interesting. It's divided in the translation I have into three stanzas. But I find it difficult to divide it into parts because it feels more like just a juxtaposition of ideas and views uh, related to war in the frontiers. You know, there doesn't seem to be a narrative strand. There doesn't seem to be a story that is being told or being exemplified through the poem. It just feels you know, like an accumulation of different uh, uh, loci communes about uh, the harshness and the characteristics of life in the frontier army. You could say that the first stanza seems to depict an arrival. So the troops uh, have been marching for a long time. They arrive at a far away place. They hear mournful sounds in the wind. Uh, in the second stanza, they see some sad sights or depressing sights from nature. Snow blotting out an endless desert, Tata geese crying. And in the third stanza, you get a description of the continuation, the relentlessness of the war, basically through rumors, through stories heard, and a sort of recapitulation that the poetic persona of the old soldier makes about the uselessness, the purposelessness of uh, warring, of fighting at such a cost in Central Asia. But uh, as I said, they feel just like a series of uh, juxtaposed recollections or images by the poetic persona. Okay, let's go couplet by couplet, as usual. 
In bright sun, we climbed the peaks to look for signal fires. At dusk, we watered our horses by the rivers of Yaohe. So this first couplet depicts as an image of an army on the march. The fact that the couplet contrasts in the bright sun and at dusk is put to emphasize um, the whole days long of marching and uh, advancing of the army. Uh, while it was still sunny, peaks were climbed in search of signal fires. So we might, in, uh, we, were in a, we might be in a region where there were Chinese garrisons and uh, signal fires to be lit when barbarians attack and so warn the people from a distance, especially other um, parts of the army or the armies that an attack was taking place. Anyway, the sun sets and uh, the, the horses of the army, this army will probably include cavalry and infantry, uh, take a sip at the rivers of Yao He. The only purpose, I think, of mentioning this is uh, to, to locate us uh, geographically. Yao He is in the western regions, uh, the Shi Yu Protectorate, in the extreme west, in what is now Central Asia, Turkestan. So the army is in the remote west, almost beyond the pale of Chinese civilization. In our camps, the sounding watch was muffled by winds thick with sand. Yet we heard the sound of a lady's lute, suffused with bitterness. So uh, the camp is in the remote area. The exoticity of the place is emphasized by the presence of desert. So the sounds of the watch, which might be metallic uh, sounds or, 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 or drum sounds made to inform the soldiers of what hour of the day or of the watch uh, the military camp is in. The sound is muffled by a storm, you know, by the sounds of a sandstorm of winds blowing thick with sand. And yet, in spite of that desert and exotic noise, a Chinese sound seems to lie in its midst. It says, yet we heard the sound of a lady's lute suffused with bitterness. Now, this is just a rhetorical trope, which uh, connects with, um, with uh, the idea of Han Chinese women in exile in the West. Uh, in one of the poems that we already led, read about Li Qi, he told us, or oh, he made the poem based on a musical composition that was based on a poem um, apocryphally ascribed, ascribed to uh, Tsai Jian, which was a woman of the late Han, who was made a prisoner by the barbarians and spent a lot of time in the West. And there she played her lute and cried. The reference here is to, probably to another woman uh, who in the earlier, or in the Han Dynasty, Wang Zhao Chung, was sent as a bride to a barbarian prince. And she also languished in the barbarian land, playing uh, the Chinese thither and longing for returning home. So these sad sounds are meant to evoke this tradition of poems uh, from the Han Dynasty and later about a Chinese bell uh, in uncivilized lands, suffering from being far from friends and from the culture of her homeland. Next stanza. Under clouds in desolate places, miles beyond our walls, snow fell and blotted out the endless desert. This is the steppe. The climate is harsh. We get no indication as to what season it might be, but it's because of the snow, probably autumn or winter. Although I imagine in the steppe it might snow even as late as spring. Basically, harsh climate, harsh landscape. It's snowing and uh, it's covering a desolate, uniform steppe or desert landscape for miles on end. Tata geese cried, sadly flying southward night after night. Hearing them, even Tata faces ran with tears. So uh, apart from the harsh nature, there is an animal, the geese, and they flow, and they're, they're, they're flying south for the better climate, the softer climate of China. So yeah, maybe this is late autumn winter. I imagine when the steppe becomes colder than ever and when the birds might uh, migrate to the softer Chinese climate in the south. Of course, the image of flying geese is a typical image of separation from loved ones. Uh, the Tatars cry when they see the geese crying. So much more would the Chinese thinking of home and desiring to go home. Now they say the Jade Gate Pass is once more under siege. So our soldiers risk their lives again 
advancing with a light chariot's force. The Jade Gate Pass was an important pass, I think close to Dunhuang, in the west, but probably to the south, or relatively uh, close, relatively, to where this soldier's army seems to be encamped in Yaohe. But it was a, a fortified pass that was the entry point into China proper, uh, that the barbarians attacked from time to time. So rumors come that the pass is under siege. Soldiers will have to go there and fight uh, to expel the barbarians and to avoid them entering the Chinese heartland. Year after year, our dead pile up beyond these wastes for nothing more than a few grapevines sent home to the gardens of the House of Han. So the poem is theoretically set in Han times, which would be adequate with the which would be consonant with the original um, present precedence uh, of these ballads. Most of them came from 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 Han times. Perhaps this is a way of avoiding of being oblique in criticism. Perhaps uh, Li Qi is criticizing the campaigns during the Tang, but by setting the poem in the Han Dynasty, you know it feels uh, like a fair game. So he won't be accused of slandering the government. And the dead keep piling up. Remember, always grim images of war, never celebratory or, or in exaltation. And what do we get out of all these nice, worthy, brave Chinese men dying in the steppes? Well, little more than nothing. It says, for nothing more than a few grape vines sent home to the gardens of the house of Han. Now, the, the grape vines weren't traditionally a Chinese uh, plant. When we talk about wine in most of these Chinese poems, we're not talking about fermented grape juice. We're basically talking about fermented rice, for the most part, or millet. Uh, wine was an exotic product, grape wine, that, uh, that reached China in the Tang Dynasty. It was you know, coming in quite big quantities from the West. And it was an exotic uh, produce that was highly appreciated by the rich and wealthy. But, you know, it's superfluous. It's not something that one needs to live. And uh, that's the idea behind this line in Li Qi. He's saying the tribute of grapevines that the barbarians, that subdued barbarians are sending back to China is not worth all the Chinese people who are dying. This luxury product is worthless compared to the lives of the Chinese men which are being lost in this pointless military expenditure and in these campaigns, in these never-ending campaigns. So all in all, the typical uh, Chinese Fu style ballad criticizing war and uh, describing in that criticism the barbarian lands of the steppe.